So within this practical, we're interested in testing for carbohydrates, for proteins, and for lipids. And we're gonna basically look at five ways in which we can do those three things, okay? So just a couple of things about our equipment. Uh, we have our reagents. That's gonna be an interesting term for you to develop an understanding of. We have our reagents, and our reagents are visible uh, over here. We have this red one, orange, blue, blue one over here. One thing I would say, is that this one here, this one here, there is a specific reason it's kind of off on its own on this side because there is a possibility at one point in the process that I'm gonna to describe to you is that you may have a Bunsen burner in play. And if you have a Bunsen burner, this one, which is, by the way is called Sudan 3, we'll get to in a second, this one cannot be present in the vicinity of any kind of flame because it's ethanol based okay so just be aware of that that's why it's sort of shifted over in the distance there the second thing i'm going to stress to you though is that we also have here our food samples okay we seem to have some cheese a potato an apple some chocolate now the way we make what we need which is called a food solution a food solution is we are going to take um, some food and we're going to grind it using our pestle and mortar and we're going to grind it with this here, which is what we would describe, oh, this here, which is distilled water, okay? And we're going to make sort of like a food paste of distilled water and, and some of our food samples. We're then going to mix it with more distilled water, and it's in that way that we create our food solution. Now, one other thing I'd say is in all cases but one, we also need to filter our food solution to get rid of food particles, okay? So that, I don't wanna go into the sort of the real detail of that, you'll do that in your lab. But just for now, just be aware that we're gonna go through that process. Now, with that in mind, let's assume we've done that really, really well. Let's have a look at a test for starch. So a couple of initial points. We have here some iodine solution, okay? An iodine solution is the reagent we are gonna to use to test for the presence of starch. Now, how are we gonna go about this? Well, we're gonna take our food solution and we are gonna get two centimeters cubed of that food solution, and we're gonna put it in a test tube. That is gonna be consistent for all of our tests, okay? So that is gonna be consistent for all of our tests. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some drops of our iodine solution into our food solution, and we're gonna observe what happens. Now, if there is the presence of starch, we'd expect this to turn what we describe as blue-black. I'll show you this in just a moment. If there is no starch present, we'd expect this to remain orange. Okay, so let's see if we can actually have a look at that. Look, so no starch present might look a bit like that. Starch present might look a bit like that. <laughs> nice drawings, James. Now, just so you can see a real example of that, you decide in that illustration which one is, oh sorry, illustration, that photograph, which one is which, which of those has starch and which of those has no starch. And I'm sure you can do that pretty easily. The blue black on the left, this has starch in it. So we've got a nice real example of what that might look like. Now, let's move this on. Let's look at a test for sugars. Now, just remind yourself, sugars and starch, starches, sorry, both fall into the category of carbohydrates. So we're still testing for carbohydrates here. Now, what have we got? Well, I said already, two centimeters cubed of our food solution. So I'll just put two centimeters cubed like that. There it is. We've also got, up here, we've also got this, which is which we're now gonna to refer to as our Benedict's solution. Now specifically, we are gonna place, specifically, we are gonna place um, 10 drops, 10 drops. So come on, let me, let me actually do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. We're gonna place 10 drops of our Benedict solution into our test tube along with our food solution. Now, at that point, we need to do a little bit more work here. We're gonna take our mixture and we're gonna place it into a beaker, into a beaker. And that beaker is gonna be, you know, it's got it's got water in it basically. Look, there's our, there's our water there. And effectively, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add probably water from a kettle. Well, we will be adding water from kettle, okay? Now, how you maintain that at probably what will be 80 degrees C, we'll discuss in a second. But we're gonna maintain the temperature of this water and we're gonna leave that in there for five minutes. And what you're gonna see in your mixture is you're gonna see a change of color. Now, just to go through what you might see, you might see initially 
that it goes a kind of green color, then turns into kind of a yellowy color. And if there's lots of sugars present, it will turn a brick red. And I wanna write that term in here for you. If there is lots of sugars present, it will turn a brick red. Now, I thought I would treat you, I don't often use videos within my videos, but I thought I would treat you and I thought I would actually show you an example of this in this little timer. So let's have a little look at this. Okay, beautiful. I'll just take that right back to the start. So let's just go through this in stages. Look, we introduce, it's about five minutes worth, so that the initial blue of the Benedicts starts to turn a kind of green color. Watch carefully. There's obviously quite a bit of sugar here, so it develops into kind of a yellow color, that kind of medium level sugar. And then it's turning to an orangey red, like it's not quite our brick red, so we're not gonna say this has got tons of sugar, but it's pretty close. It's getting between something between orange and redness, so there's plenty of sugars present here. It doesn't quite get to that brick red stage, but you get the idea of how that changes. Now, that there is a nice example of how we test for sugars. Can I just remind you, low quantities of sugar, we would expect to see a kind of like greeny color, blue to green. Medium sugar's yellowy. Lots of sugars, orange to brick red. Okay, so that term really, really important for us. Now, let's address proteins. It looks kind of similar, right? Well, there are similarities. Again, we have two centimeters cubed of food solution, which has been filtered. Great, well, that's consistent. What have we got up here? Is this Benedict's again? No, this time we are incorporating exactly two centimeters cubed of a reagent called Biorette solution. You might hear it called Biorette's. Okay, didn't mean to put that S in there, Biorette solution, okay? Now, if we have proteins present in, the, in this mixture, what would we expect to happen? And if we've got none, what would we expect to happen? So let's address the none first. So if we've done this and there's no proteins present, what would we expect, what would we expect to see, okay? Well, if there's no protein, we kind of expect it to remain blue. So I'll just write here, remain blue. You know, it stays like a blue color from the Biorettes. Well, what if that R, R protein's present? Well, then we get a kind of a lilac-y, mauve purple color, okay? So here, I'm gonna describe this as lilac, purple, mauve. Mauve's not a word I use very often. Mauve, okay? Lilac-y kind of a purpley color. Now again, if you wanna see that kind of in real life, I've got a nice shot of this for you. Okay. We've got here on the right-hand side, remains blue. On this right-hand side, we've got the presence of no proteins. On this left-hand side, we've got this kind of lilac color. Developed. We've got proteins in this, uh, in this solution. Nice. Let's go down to lipids. Okay, again, lipids slightly different, but there is a relatively similar, similar theme. First of all, we're gonna have two centimeters cubed of food solution. However, this time the food solution is unfiltered, unfiltered. We have not removed the food particles from this, okay? They need to stay in for this particular test. We're then gonna take, we're then gonna take, um, a chemical called Sudan 3, which let me remind you is ethanol based and cannot be anywhere near uh, flame. And we are going to add specifically one, two, three drops of Sudan 3 to our unfiltered food solution. All right, what do we expect to happen? Well, if there is the presence of no lipids, we're just going to expect this to kind of like turn like a red color. Okay, nothing too surprising with that. We're adding a redness to it, of course. If we do have lipids present, we might expect we might expect a kind of a layer of to appear on top and we describe this as a red stained a red stained oil layer a red stained oil layer and that suggests or that proves lipids are present and again let me just show you what that might actually look like so here we go kind of ended up with the layers in the wrong way so over here on the right hand side over here on the right hand side, what would we argue here? That here there are no lipids present. Here we've got our stained, red stained oil layer. Yes, here we have our lipids present. So we really summarize that point. Now, the only thing I wanna to do to finish off with, and I'm not really gonna go over to this particular test in detail, but this is what we would call the ethanol, the ethanol emulsion test. And again, it is a test for lipids, okay? So it is a test 
for lipids. And really, I just want to give you the parameters of this. We're going to take two centimeters cubed of water. We're going to take two centimeters cubed of ethanol. And we're going to mix it with a few drops of, let's say, let's go for some something kind of fat-based like coconut oil, for argument's sake. Now, that would be the exact circumstances that we get like this cloudy appearance over here, this kind of cloudy white appearance. This shows that we have the presence of lipids. We get the kind of this cloudy emulsion. Okay, this clear example here, this one is clear. We have not used something fat-based. It's there's some other, you know, we've we've either got no, um, well, basically what we're saying is we've got no lipids present whatsoever. So it could be that we've used a food a sample that has no lipids, and we've tested for that, and it proves there are no lipids present. That's our reagents.